Hello and welcome to the big picture. The signs of it were always there ever since the advent of the new BJP-led government at the centre. It became official on the Independence Day when Prime Minister Modi made it clear that they were going ahead and disbanding the planning commission as we have known it <coughs> all these six decades and more. The commission set up through a cabinet resolution in 1950 has been mainly involved in planning and allocation of funds to states apart from monitoring the utilisation of these funds. Even before the new government came and Prime Minister Modi expressed his reservations about it and wanted it replaced, former Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh had himself expressed his reservations. In his last address to the Commission members before he laid down office in May, he had wondered whether the tools and approaches relied by the Commission was designed for a <coughs> different era. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who has been critical of the functioning of the Planning Commission during his days as Chief Minister of Gujarat, has now decided not only to change the tools and approaches, but the body itself. So what kind of a body should now replace the planning commission? What is it that the new body should focus on? And what is it that should be retained from the planning commission? We will discuss all this today with Sompal Chastri, former union minister, who was also a member of the planning commission between 1999 and 2004 in the previous NDA government, Dr. Mihir Shah, member of the planning commission during the second UPA government between 2009 and 2014, Professor Ravi Srivastava of the Centre for Study of Regional Development at the JNU, Paranjoy Goha Takurta, Senior Journalist and Author, and Dr. Sambit Patra, Spokesperson of the BJP. Welcome to all of you. Uh, Mr. Shastri, you were there, uh, you, are, you are the oldest person in, on this panel who has been and you know part of the Planning Commission and things like that. You think, you think that the decision to you know, disband or <coughs> you know, rediscover if, if, I, if I may say that, the Planning Commission is a good idea? You see, even when I was in the Planning Commission as a member, and before that in the Standing Committee related to Ministry of Finance in Parliament, on both these occasions, I also had recommended that the mandate that was originally assigned to the Planning Commission has never been fulfilled by the Planning Commission. What, what was the original mandate? According? Original mandate is contained in seven clauses in the resolution of the Cabinet which you are talking about, which set up the Commission. And the first clause says that Planning Commission would make a proper assessment of the nation's resources, uh, natural, uh, financial and human, which has which it has never done and it relied on the statistics which were half cooked and unreliable. The second was that it would... Uh, half cooked and unreliable. Don't tell me last <laughs> yeah. 60 years no, Indian no, no. Planning Commission... Yes, but don't go into that because we will lose the yeah. track of the main issue then. The second was that it would accordingly devise a strategy and a schemes to for optimum utilization of these resources and fix the priorities and time frames which it has never done. The third was, and which is equally important, that it would devise machinery to implement those schemes and plans. And fourth, that it will continuously monitor those things, which it never did, except tangentially. And the last one, which is important, fifth, though there are two more which I don't remember now, which is very, very important, that Planning Commission will continuously identify impediments to growth right. and regularly advise the central government and all the provincial governments to remove those, which mm -hmm. Planning Commission never did. So the criticism is that Planning Commission did not fulfill its original mandate. It became a mere post office and a mere mirror image of the ministries, whatever they filed as their requirements and allocations by the central government, it cosmetically tinkered on the margin and approved those. And sometimes even acted as a blockade to certain schemes, which sometimes were good, sometimes these were bad. And in my presence, when I wanted to edit the 147 odd schemes of the main department of agriculture and cooperation, and reduce them to 13 and, uh, and try to converge everything and uh, subsume everything in those 13 schemes instead of the multiplicity and cross purposes which we were indulging in. Uh, the government was defeated on the floor of the house, then I became member of the planning commission and I took it up and reported straight. To Five the years you were there. Five years I was there. But you were not to able to fulfill what No, I was not able. I could not carry my weight. I tried to do this. The same special secretary who later became uh, the, the secretary of agriculture and who had 
uh, minuted the proceedings of that committee in the agriculture uh, ministry, <coughs> did not agree to reduce those bef below 73. So this was unnecessary proliferation and then the unnecessary flag which has been created, I don't remember the exact number, but total employees at the Commander Planning Commission are more than 20,000 spread all over the country. Sir, I think you have laid down at least the, the foundation for the discussion. Uh, Dr. Meher Shah, 10 years later, you, jo you joined the, uh, after he joined. Uh, so, you, would you agree with, it, with, with him that, you know, the Planning Commission has not really fulfilled its mandate in, the, in these last 60 years? See, I think Sompalji has made many sweeping statements. So I think they tend to, uh, you know, he's a good friend of mine, uh, veer onto the extreme. I think there are valid criticisms of the Planning Commission. I can understand why the government is exercised and wants to do something to reform its functioning. But I do believe that there are many positive functions that the Planning Commission has historically performed, which we must be very careful not to throw the baby out to the bathroom. And that, I think, is something we must... What are these key functions? Yeah, I'll just come to that. Because the fact is that we abolish something, but we should be very clear as to the alternative that we are Absolutely. We are, we are looking for... We are talking about the alternative today. Yeah. So, what I was thinking was that, you know, if when I hear something like a think tank... Right. ...as the role of the Planning Commission, I get worried. Because, you know, think tanks exist by the dozen in this country. And almost every other day you hear of a and new think new. tank being created. I think the Planning Commission... Uh, yes, there is a think tank role, but it's a think tank role with a difference. It is empowered in many ways to make a difference to the way the implementers carry on the job of implementation. The implementers are the ministries and the state companies. Right. And I believe that the Planning Commission has a crucial role to play in reforming implementation of the schemes that, you know, on which we spend lakhs of crores every year. That is something that we need a role to be played by in the your, new institution. In your five years there, would, do you think that, 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 that any attempts were made to reform and any of them were successful? Absolutely. I think, you know, I was brought into the planning commission. I have, as you know, not been part of government. But the specific mandate the Prime Minister gave me was that we need a paradigm shift in the way we are managing water resources in India. Okay. And I believe a great achievement of the 12th five-year plan in which all the state governments contributed in a major way. And let me tell you, in my opinion, it's the states that lead the process of reform in this country. The role of the Planning Commission has to be, and that's the kind of role I tried to play, and I have seen examples of that, where some of the best work that is done in some of the states can be mainstreamed across the country. One of the leading examples of that in the five years I was there is the Jyoti Gram Yojana of Gujarat, which was about separation of power feeders. And I played a role in mainstreaming this across the length and breadth of India, which has made a dramatic impact on the availability of power in states such as Madhya Pradesh. So I think the process of cross-learning, which is something that is happening, which is good in one part of the country, how it can be carried to another part of the country, is a very important role that the Planning Commission was playing. And the new institution, I'm not mourning, you know, the passing of an institution. I'm saying whatever new we create must carry forward the strength that was there in the earlier institution, the potential strength, if you like, which was there. And and the weaknesses which uh, Mr. Sompal pointed out. See, I think... One of the, were, no, it's an alarming weakness which he says, he says that no, it doesn't I, have... It didn't have the kind of, uh, you know, uh, database or, or, you know, it relied upon see, information think, yeah, which I is not reliable. The, I think the major weakness that I have written about also uh, publicly is that there was too much negative power which the Planning Commission and the Ministry of Finance in the scheme of things in governance in India wield. And that the, the ability to block innovative ideas, reformist ideas was a very negative role that the Planning Commission is guilty of. Itself played, you think? Itself played. And I had a personal experience of that in terms of the attempts I made. So I think that is a very important thing that needs needed correction and it urgently needs correction so that we don't have this process of, uh, you know, what the Prime Minister alluded to in his Independence Day speech of uh, departments acting, you know, at cross purposes. Cro with each other. Cross -purposes. And I believe that the Planning Commission potentially, and in, there are examples of its positive role, where it played a role in resolving conflicts across departments. Uh, there were problems in the even states. Ex even across the states. Exactly, I, I was going to come into that. Yes, that the state governments have so much to complain about the way they are treated by the centre. I personally was in charge. 
And, of, the, and this Prime Minister knows, that, knows it very well? No, absolutely. The Madhya Pradesh yeah. Chief Minister was on a fast in protest against right. the treatment meted out by the centre. The Prime Minister asked me and I mediated between the Chief Minister of <coughs> Madhya Pradesh and the various central ministries and a resolution to his complaints was arrived at. I think this is a very powerful role that potentially the Planning Commission could play and did play in certain instances and the new institution must continue to play this role. Okay, Samit Patra. <coughs> Samit Patra, why do you think this is necessary? You think one of the criticisms or one of the worries which are being expressed is that has enough preparation been done before you disband an institution like a, a like planning commission which has been there for six decades, six decades or more, and then bringing in a new <coughs> institution? Has there been enough planning done? You think that is where the government can find itself in some kind of a trouble? Now, I believe a lot of planning is going into it in the sense that uh, Mr. Narendra Modi in his speech at 15th August mentioned a very pertinent point. He said that at times it is very essential to make a house fresh from the foundation itself than to go into a renovation of the house. And I believe this is where lies the indication that it is better that we disband the whole structure and start a fresh one than trying to bring about the kind of reforms that, prob that probably Mr. Manmohan Singh had also talked about. But there are two or three quick points that this government, I believe, uh, really wants to derive uh, out of the new structure. Uh, what number of, uh, I think, articles have written about is Modi's DEF, derivation out of the new body that would be formed, D for the dignity of leadership of the state, E for the empowerment of the state, and F for facilitation. I believe whatever new body comes has to give back the dignity that the state uh, ministers mostly had lost during the era of planning commission. As my previous uh, uh, sp speaker was also saying that the chief ministers had go to hunger had, had even gone into hunger strike and in fact uh, planning commission and the environment ministry were the two important tools which were used to harass the chief minister quite often so i believe the dignity has to be restored as far as empowerment is concerned mr modi has time and again pointed towards the federal structure of india and has said that things have changed from 1950s when the uh, when the planning commission was formed on the line of the Soviet uh, model and I believe the federalism structure of India is now the most strong one and the development should be state center and he has time and again said, uh, said that the center should behave not as a big brother of the state but as an equal partner of the state for the growth of this country and this is where letting the state decide what its priority are where it wants to stay uh, where it wants to spend its funds this I believe the state should uh, empower itself with. Okay. And thirdly, it is facilitation where the think tank, so called think tank, I would not say it, was the, it would be a think tank body. But when my predecessors say that uh, it should, uh, he was speaking about the Jyoti uh, Gram uh, project of uh, Gujarat and how he brought it to whole of India. I believe this is what is facilitation, where you have a good idea which you believe would sell through the whole country. You should <coughs> try, I mean the new body should try to facilitate that and that would be a big role. So okay. the DEF model I believe is what we are looking towards. Okay. Uh, Ravi Srivastav, so yeah. you think, uh, you know, this, this new body new body, what kind of a... He, Sambit Patra talks about restoring dignity, empowerment and things like that in the federal structure. You think that the Planning Commission had failed in any of these matters and you think that... Do you think that the new body will be able to restore this and what kind of a body do, would, you, would you like to see there in, in the place of the Planning Commission? Girish, I think, uh, you know, several articles have talked about it. Several people have tried to say that the Planning Commission actually uh, played several roles, not one role. And one of the roles that it played, which was, was in some sense a regulatory role, looking at EFCs, a lot of the petty bureaucracy in the Planning Commission, in fact, was involved in the so-called regulatory roles. Uh, the Planning Commission was also played a similar role, but for a very different kind of reason with respect to the states. And we know that the present Prime Minister was piqued with uh, some of the ways in which the Planning Commission, you know, played that role. But I think as an outsider, an ISP, I am not a member of the Planning Commission. I have interacted with the Planning Commission for over 20 years. The Planning Commission played a role which was extremely important. That was that of policy coordination. Policy coordination between the different ministries of the Government of India. A policy coordination between the centre and the states. It tried to build a framework with certain objectives from time to time within which this policy coordination would take place. 
Every five years, it carried out a humongous exercise of consultation with experts, with state governments, with central ministries, through working through a process of working groups, steering committees. And this process of consultation had in fact increased over the years. In the last few years, civil society organizations, NGOs were drawn into this process of consultation. And I would say that this kind of policy coordination was in fact an extremely critical role which the Planning Commission played. So the negative role, the regulatory role, frankly, I don't think we needed Babus sitting in the Planning Commission to play the kind of role. And believe me, the majority of people sitting in the Planning Commission were playing a regulatory role. The, the aspect of policy coordination, thinking through policies, thinking through what should happen was left to very few individuals. Partly because the Planning Commission had become a place where people in the bureaucracy were put simply because they had nowhere else to go. But that the, the positive side of what the Planning Commission did, not only every five years, but as an ongoing process, one must understand and one must understand that there is what there were, there is no other body which actually plays that process, which okay. tells us, you know, where, how much should the IMR come down. I just want to say one thing. Yes. A lot of the problems in the Indian economy are intersectoral problems. There are inter, in, you know, inter-ministerial problems. Right. When I was in the Arjun Sen Gupta Commission, we made a series of recommendations which did not fall within the purview of any single ministry. And finally, the Prime Minister said, look, why don't you speak to the Planning Commission? Because the Planning Commission will understand what it means to talk about the challenge of employment. Uh, and the final point I want to make is that the world over, Internationally, the World Bank and the IMF have been trying to shift the focus back of decision making into the finance ministries. Right. This is disastrous. India exactly is one country. India is one country where there was a countervailing body, an independent body, which sat through policy coordination, and even the World Bank and the IMF had to consult it and right. to talk to it. Right. Okay, Paranjay, that's a very important last point what uh, Ravi Srivastava you know, We had a discussion on this issue about uh, two, 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 three months back here. This was, uh, this was what was expressed, the fear was expressed. Are we going to see all these, uh, you know, powers being now with, with the finance ministry? And or, the the prime minister's office, or the prime minister's office. Or the cabinet office, secretariat. And are they, are they capable of, you know, doing the job which the Planning Commission was doing as far as the state was concerned, as far as the coordination was concerned? Answer, no. Very, very, in, in, in brief, no. You know, the Planning Commission may be dead, but the new avatar of the Planning Commission, we don't know what its character and complexion would be. It has to play certain roles which nobody else can play. Exactly. You know, you, see, uh, Samit Patra if talked... It, if uh, it ends up as a think tank, will, will it minute. be able to It has it. to be much more than a think tank. Right. As Mihir has pointed out rightly. You know, Samit Patra said this is like marking a sort of a, the final demise of Nehruvian socialism, etc. But wait. In advanced capitalist countries who believe firmly in the virtues of free enterprise capitalism, they have planning bodies. Well, why do they need it? You need people within the system who are not bureaucrats, who are not politicians, who are experts in their own right, they have to look ahead. Secondly, the point that has been made again and again, this issue of coordination, you know, which Mr. Modi himself is talking about, that, you know, he came to Delhi as an outsider and he saw how, you know, different ministries are loggerheads with one another. Look, take two examples. Mr. Sompal Shasi knows this better than I. Agriculture. How many ministries are involved? Irrigation, rural development, food, civil supplies, commerce, finance, etc. Take energy. Fertilizer. Take energy. Fertilizer. More than half a dozen ministries and departments involved. At <clears> the <throat> end of the day, A is the act of la issue of coordination, policies, programs. Who acts like an internal auditor of the government? Who says this particular program is being properly, you know, sort of implemented or not implemented? You know, you can have external consultants, but you need people with cloud <coughs> within the system. Secondly, look at it historically. The Planning Commission has been trashed and the Planning Commission has been very, very powerful. Prashant Chandra Mahalanobis, who set up the Indian Statistical Institute, Nehruji's own cabinet colleagues uh, sort of were envious of him and described him like a super prime minister. 
Take an extreme, Adi, actually, 1985, when Rajiv Gandhi was the Prime Minister, he described the members of the Planning Commission as a bunch of jokers. Right. At that point of time, the Deputy Chairman was Dr. Manmohan Singh. And if you read Mr. Sumaya's book, you know, he had to be persuaded to remain in that position. Arun Shori, who many people were thinking he might occupy one of the more spacious rooms in Yojana Bhavan, he's described uh, the Planning Commission as a parking lot for, you know, uh, political cronies and, and, you know, retired bureaucrats. But wait. You can trash the Planning Commission and even within the Planning Commission, there's been a lot of criticism over many of its functions. But there are certain roles that have been played by the Planning Commission which somebody has to play. The okay. question is, okay, can it be just the Finance Com Ministry? Right. Can it be just the Cabinet Secretariat? Can it be just the, 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 the Prime Minister's the office? I, I would say no. You need internal systems of Mr. checks Shastri. and balances just so like so you, need no, you, you, you need to answer. An I mean, this is, this see, is the question see, which will be continued my, to my, raise until we see what this, uh, the, the shape with this body my, will be. My initial statement in response to your first question yes. was only a part statement. Absolutely. And when I say the criticism is not that Planning Commission was not needed. The criticism is that Planning Commission has not been able to fulfill its mandate. Right. We, we, so, yes. but I agree with uh, Mr. Mihir Shah, Dr. Mihir Shah, that Planning Commission has been doing roles which none else, no other entity in the government is able to do. And I don't agree with uh, uh, Mr. Samvit Patra that the states felt embarrassed. I could always no, interact the with the state. Dignity. They the felt most. They destroyed. felt most comfortable when they were in the planning commission. Five years we have discussed annual plans and the reviews in at half yearly time and other interactions going to the states. They found that planning commission is <coughs> more accommodative, more understanding, and appreciate the difficulties of the states. And I agree with him that the coordination between the states and coordination between various departments has been a very, very Sir, important we, we role. Have, we, have, we have discussed that. Now I want you to, because we are running out of time, I want you to address this issue. The new body, what what kind of a new body, the questions raised by Paranjoy about whether... You see, you know, even, even internally we had put up notes that the unnecessary flap of the planning commission should be cut down. Right. Because it has more than 20,000 employees, okay. these regional planning cells and those things which it has never been able to achieve. And secondly... It should not only be a mere think tank and mere advisory body, but a coordinating body as it is. Rather, it should be uh, reminded of its original mandate and also improve its functioning. That should be the idea. Yes. It can, and I agree with Mir Shah that the, the baby should not be thrown the, out with, with the, the bath water. Bath water. Uh, yep. Dr. Mir Shah, the question is, if, if uh, this, the, the planning commission as it is now is disbanded, now, who takes over the jobs which, which the Planning Commission was doing? Who do you think is, is capable of taking over it, the jobs? No, as <coughs> what are the, I mean, if you, can, if you can lay down one, two, three, four, the, the important jobs which needs to be taken care of, who will, who will handle that? No, I would answer your question by saying what this new body must do yes. and no one else can do. Yes. And that is, number one, helping the facilitation, what Sambit was saying. That facilitation of the best practices being mainstreamed across the length and breadth of India is something that the people of India are really looking for. We don't want only outlays in our flagship programs, we want outcomes. Right. And ensuring that is a very important role that a body must play. So it's not just thinking, it's not just a think tank role, it's an implementation reform role which this body must play. Number two, it's about resolution of conflicts. Across stakeholders, it's very natural. This is what the Prime Minister was alluding to. Yeah, the, Dr. Mesh, yeah. just one second. The fear, the worry of some people is that the Finance Ministry will become the nodal point of all these things or the PMO as a uh, uh, thing. No, but so, <coughs> you know, but then what happens to these bodies? Would the states be more comfortable dealing with the, sta with the, with the Finance Ministry or the PMO directly in these cases? Sompalji said, you know, about the comfort level of the states. Actually, I partly disagree with them in the sense that they were also uncomfortable about the big brother role that the Planning Commission historically Absolutely. played. And we must take that away from the Planning Commission. Exactly the negative role that it was playing, all the babus that, you know, <coughs> have dominated this uh, institution. But we do need somebody who is going to listen to the grievances of ministries with each other, of states with the centre, and that has to be done by a body which is independent of the, you know, the actual implementers. Okay. So it has to be, that was the role of, it's a unique institution which stands within but outside government, you know, and that kind of unique positioning must be with the new institution as well. Okay. And, as, and, and, and yes. deriving its validity and legitimacy from the fact that Prime Minister happens to be the chairperson. 
Okay. And it's uh, very important you organically. Absolutely. Absolutely. You, you Absolutely. also need a body yes. for the NDC, the National yes. Development, Development Council. Council, which comprises the Prime Minister, the Cabinet Ministers, and Chief all Ministers the, of all, all the, the states. states and union territories, the heads. So I think to, co to, to have a body that can facilitate the working of the NDC, you need, you need the planning committee. Actually, so, there can be a proposal to amalgamate both, Rajar. NDC there and, is a fair and representation the from the states. Or, 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 or what Vitt because Vittman NDC, is, NDC just one annual council. conference. A formality which is never followed. NDC. And, yes, NDC. And most of the complaints which were filed by the states were on the occasion of the NDC annual conference rather than with the planning commission. During my five years, maybe that during Dr. So, Mir Shah's time, states never complained about the behavior of the planning commission. So, Palji, you remember one of the recommendations of the Sarkaria Commission was to have revived this whole inter interstate council of states, have a permanent body and yeah. not have a once a year meeting <laughs> of the NDC. Professor Ravi Srivastava. Yeah, yeah, you know, the uh, I would like to uh, just make a slight difference with me. You see, the prop there is a general dilemma in the institutions of the central government in dealing with the states. And they say one is, and it basically has to do with the stick and the carrot. Okay, I mean, in on the one, the, how far do you let the states go in following independent policies? And where do you rein them in or try to make them do what you think they should be doing? Now, in a federal government, this is a, this is a, a, a very critical dilemma. The planning commission use the plan funds at this as let's say the stake, you know, conditionalities and so on and so forth. And if this is part of a general thing which we have to think it through. You know, I mean, it requires seriously thinking through. The other parts, I think, you know, many of us are agreeing on what this new body should be focusing on. Policy coordination, setting up goals. It's not a question of how much investment is at the command of the planning commission or the government of India or the public entities, but what do they expect it to achieve and how do they expect it to achieve. That is extremely important that whatever body comes into existence now, has to play the negative role and, and, and in particular I would single out the, uh, the control that the planning commission exercises over the plan, the way, you know, basically EFC scrutinizing these and so on, and really gives to rise to a lot of babu dum in the planning commission. This is a role which can easily be assumed by the finance ministry without doing any violence to the basic uh, requirements of what the planning commission is supposed to do. But this body, this you know, you call it a development commission, call it what you may, I, it, it has played an extremely important role in putting views together, putting a broad, holistic view of where the government should go and how it should go about doing it. Okay. Despite so, all limitations. Okay, Samit, very quickly, last wo last words to you. You think you, you think that the government, you know, it has, it has actually invited uh, suggestions from people. Uh, do you think that the government has some kind of a blueprint about how it will how, how it will go about? No, I believe let's not preempt as to what kind of structure would be formed. I, whatever structure would be formed would be for the benefit of the people and that's the reason as to why Mr. Modi has uh, invited in his personal platform as to what the country and the citizen feels that the body should be like. It's okay. a welcome step. But most importantly, what it should not be like is elected, democratically elected chief ministers rushing into the well of red tapism to no, get the priorities of okay. their own state. I believe this should no, go. That, that, Let that, the that, states decide what the priority is that the, the federal structures rule at the end of the day. Okay, but okay, Ganesh, it is a bit ironical that we are talking about replacing this extremely important institution after it has been junked. Ah, yeah, Mr. You Shastri, see, very quick last words. It please. should be, you see, restructured, having reference to the things that it, that it has missed historically, having reference to the important and very vital roles of coordination and other things that it has played uh, during this historic um, time. And third, what things should be added to it. So it has to be restructured okay. and any name given, but remaining, uh, keeping it akin to what the planning commission you know, is. I, I agree, One sentence. I, I agree with what Shivastava ji yes. said. This debate should have taken place. You know, before it, before it was scrapped. Before the decision was taken to scrap. Dr. Yes. Mayer Shah, no. one other thing which was said during the last debate we had was about who will who will talk about the interests of the poor? You think that is that is a crucial issue which needs to I be I think absolutely. I think the, the attempts in the recent years in the planning commission that we were making was to make planning a much more inclusive and participatory process. Right. <clears throat> and we were, I had in fact invited 
all the chairs of the working groups that I had set up were from outside government. Right. And most of the members were experts. The best minds and practitioners in the country were planning for the country going ahead. Okay. And I think that process must be strengthened. Must be strengthened and retained. Okay, I think on that note, we need to end retaining the inclusiveness of the whole system which, which had prevailed. Hopefully, we will, we, will, we will have many more discussions before this new body takes shape. Thanks to all my guests. I hope the government will take note of uh, all the suggestions which has come about in, the, uh, uh, in today's discussions. Thanks to all my guests, Professor Ravi Shivastav, Sambit Patra, Mehir Sen, Mehir Shah, sorry, uh, Sompal Shastri and Paranjoy. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue on Big Picture same time tomorrow.